This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. I am delighted to be here helping you with playing the guitar. In this Guitar 101 mini course, it's all about Christmas music. So there's 30 different episodes. Each episode covers a different Christmas song. In this video, I'll be going over O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which is one of my favorite Christmas songs. Perhaps it's one of yours as well. This one's pretty fun. In this lesson, I'll start out by going over playing the melody, so we'll start by playing the melody. Then we'll work on strumming the chords, which could accompany singing the melody or somebody else playing the melody. And then we'll work on finger picking those chords, which could also be used to accompany singing the melody or somebody else playing the melody. If you haven't done so already, you're going to want to go down and grab the, tab or grab the actual sheet music which has the notation and tablature and standard music notation. It's got the lyrics and the chords. So there's going to be a link down in the description for this video where you can click on that link and get the sheet music for this. You're going to need that sheet music to play along with me. So grab that if you haven't already. Okay, so we'll start out with the melody. Now on this music, the melody is written out in both the standard music notation and the tablature, so you can read it in either place. If you don't know how to read tablature and you'd like to, then there's a quick answer video in the academy that will help you get going on how to read tablature. There's also a book uh, in the method book series, in my method book series, that has 200 different selections that progressively get more involved, and that can help you master the ability to play music written in tablature, especially as we're working on those single lines. And of course, that book comes with hours of video lessons right along with me. So you can play right along with me and get all the helpful hints that I give out. There's also the note reading books if you'd like to know standard music notation, and there's a quick answer video that can get you started on that. So if you don't know how to read standard music notation with the guitar or tablature, then you're going to want to go and grab that. The quickest way to learn this melody is going to be to use that tablature. And of course, you can do it by ear too. So, the melody here, we're going to play through this. The rhythm is written out pretty basic, so you could sort of add some syncopation and just hip up that rhythm if you want to, but when writing the lyrics and the chords and everything, it's just easiest to keep it simple. As we're playing through it, a lot of my in-person students love to sing, and that's actually a great thing to do because it helps you play the melody better, because it's internalizing what we've got up here in our minds as far as knowing the song into how we're going to pl actually play it on the guitar, so that's helpful. And it can also help us improve our singing of the song, because as we hear it played on the guitar we can match that pitch so you can do that if you'd like to we're coming in on beat four in the pickup measure I'll give us one two three and then we'll come in on beat four here we go one two three oh, come on. are focusing on playing. Okay, so there's the melody. Let's go ahead and play these chords. So I've got a strumming pattern written up here on the board. Down, down, up, up, down. Now, if you're not familiar with how to read these strumming patterns, then you can check out the quick answer video on rhythmic notation and understanding strumming patterns. I'm here to help though in this case. So we've got a rhythm written out. We've got a quarter note and then six eighth notes and the one on the end of two 
and the one right on beat three are tied together. And the rhythm goes one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. Strumming direc directions are written above. So the three-sided rectangle, sort of like something you might shoot a little croquet bar, uh, ball through or something, that's a down strum. And then the V, like a U for up, is an up strum. So we're going to have down, down, up, up, down, up. Now this is probably a familiar strumming pattern. It's one that most of us learn as we're playing the guitar. It's sort of universal. It works for so many different styles. As we apply it to this song, it gets a little tricky because we've got some uh, measures where we've got two chords per bar. And in some of those instances, that second chord is coming in on beat three, and in other instances, it's coming in on beat four. So as we look at the first line, we have occurrences of both. So we have A minor for a whole bar. We got the D minor to the G. A couple different ways we can handle it when the chord comes in on beat three. One, we can take and just use the first half of the strumming pattern twice. D minor to G. So I go down, down, up, down, down, up. Another option is to use the strumming pattern, but just bring our G chord in a little early in anticipation of beat three, which isn't happening. It's syncopated over. So we could go D minor and grab that G on the up strum. For this song, this isn't always my favorite option. So down, down, up, up, down. And then another option is to just remove the tie all together and do a down, up, down, up on beat three and four. So I could go down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And that's a nice option. Play through the song, any of those three can be used and you can change it up depending on the part of the song, but those are three great ways to handle that. Now in the third measure, we have the G7 coming in on B4. This sort of thing happens a lot in this song, and a great way to handle that is to just play the down up that happens on B4. So in that in that bar three C, G7, just right on B4, so down, down, up. Seven, and then we're we continue on. So that first few measures would sound like. I chose to go down, up, down, up when I got to the chords on, that come in on beat three. That's what I did there. So that's a great way to handle that. Throughout this song, we're going to see those types of things. Let's go ahead and try it. So I'm just going to do verse one. It keeps these videos a little shorter, but you've got all the verses there, so you can do them all at home if you'd like to. So we're going to have one, two, three. Oh, come I did have one spot in there where I chose to bring the chord in um, on the up, the second chord on the up. Mostly I did the down, down, up, down, up, down, up. I might have also had one in there where I went down, down, up, down, down, up. I can't remember. Focusing on playing. So, but in the case of all the ones that came in on beat four, I put it in on the down, up.
Okay, so that's how to do strumming, and it can be done a lot faster if you like. If you want to take it at a tempo where you kind of manage catching where all those things were at. Let's take a look at the finger picking. Before I do, I'd have mentioned that if any of these chords, you don't know how to play them, there are quick answer videos that go over how to play all these individual chords. So there's a playlist that goes over how to play individual chords on the guitar and how to play all the different types that we run into. And so there is a quick answer video for each one of these chords so if you need help figuring out how to play them. With finger picking, um, if you don't know how to do finger picking or if you haven't done that before, then you're going to want to check out my quick answer video that'll get you started on that. This song's a little bit more involved because we do have these chords coming in on beat four and on beat three, but especially beat four adds some challenge in there that's kind of fun and can sound good but it's good I'm not gonna go over all the introductory steps to learning how to do the finger style so if you need help with that check that out I will say we have our finger picking pattern a great one any strumming pattern any finger pick picking pattern for 4-4 four, four time would work for this song I just have a couple ones that work well that I've thrown out as examples so in this finger picking pattern, we've got all eighth notes, so the rhythm is the same just regardless what we're picking. And then up above are these letters representing what fingers that we're going to play. So P is for thumb, I for index, M for middle, and A for ring. Our pinky just moves with that ring finger, so it doesn't have one of its own. The reason P for thumb is a, a letter P instead of a T is because, and the same thing with A instead of R for the ring finger, is that guitar started in Spain and Italy. And in those countries, the word for thumb starts with the letter P and the word for the ring finger starts with the letter A. And that's the standard letters that we use. So we use those even when we're speaking English. Now, when we're plucking with the thumb, we're going to pluck the lowest note of the chord, or the bass note of the chord. And then when we're playing the other strings, our index is going to always pluck the third string, middle is going to always pluck the second string, and ring is going to always pluck the top string. So they're on the treble strings. Ring, middle, index for string 3, 2, 1, or G, B, E, if that helps knowing the pitch. And then the thumb plays strings 4, 5, and 6. And it just depends on which note is the lowest note of the chord. That's the one we're going to play. So if we were to do this on an E minor for a moment, we'd pluck the low sixth string. And then we don't need to have our fingers on. So that helps out. So our thumb would pluck the sixth string. Then we're going to have it'll, it'll, index, just combined. It'll, I just, by saying it'll, I just combined index and middle. That's kind of silly. Thumb, index, middle, and ring are going to happen at the same time. Or you can just do the middle if you want. So P, I, M, A, I. Thumb, index, middle, and ring, index. Or thumb, index, middle, index. Either way, they're both great. Play both of them here. So we're going to get used to that. Then we're going to have ring middle index ring on that last part ring middle index ring so the whole thing p i m a i a m i a or p i m i a m i a you just want to get that so you feel comfortable with it either option playing it there on e minor even if you gotta stop the video for a moment now, as we insert this, the thumb is going to change, but the fingers will, will not. They'll stay on those same strings. So A minor, we're going to pluck the open fifth string, which is an A pitch. For D minor, we're going to pluck the open fourth string, because that's a D. So for all D chords, it's the fourth string. For all A chords, it's the fifth string. For all E chords, it's the sixth string, whether it's major, minor, or dominant seventh. And then for the rest of the chords, it's the lowest place we stick a finger on. So we've got a G, that's going to be the sixth string. We've got a C, that's going to be the fifth string. We've got an F, that's going to be the fourth string or the sixth string, depending on which version you play. And that gets us through the other chords. Now, what makes this one kind of extra tricky is we've got these places with two chords per bar. When we have the second chord coming in on beat three, we just repeat this first half. So like in that second measure, D minor, I play the first half of the pattern, and then for G, 
play the first half of the pattern. So those first two measures sound like D minor, G. So it's just like that. So that takes care of playing that second chord when it comes in on beat three. What do we do when it comes in on beat four? So I'll use bar three as an example where we've got the C and then the G7 on beat four. So we can do what I just did. We can do a pinch. What do I mean by pinch of that chord that comes in on beat four? We're going to play index, middle ring, and pinky all together at once. Just play them all and that creates a little pinch. So it'd be like C. that again. Now that works really well, but we do it in this song so often with that chord on beat four that breaking up that eighth note feel of constant eighth notes in the rhythmic pattern, uh, we might not like it as well. So we need to add something in. So I have C. So I can add in an extra pluck with any of the fingers and it will work. my index finger, I think that that one sounds really nice. C, pinch, and then I go. Now, as I'm mentioning this, sometimes as we start adding in that extra pluck, it's a bit much to try and pinch all of our fingers and the index at the same time. So we can just pinch the ring and, and index together and then do our uh, ring and thumb together and then do our index pluck. So C, so all I did was pinch ring and thumb together and then grab with my index. That works nice. Now if you want more of the chord, you could just pinch with the, the middle and ring and thumb. That sounds really nice. Or I can do the whole chord. Whichever I'm feeling like doing. They all work, and of course on that eighth note, that and of four, I could use a different finger to pluck, but I think it sounds best usually when I'm doing that middle. Unless I just do thumb and ring, then it can sound really nice to come to the middle finger. I, didn't, I grabbed both of them together. That can sound really nice. Pluck the ring and, into, uh, and thumb together and then come to the middle. So those are some different ways to handle beat four. I'm probably going to be mostly pinching all of it and then doing index or pinching middle and ring and then doing index as I play this. Okay, let's go ahead and play that first line a couple times and then we'll play the whole song. So we're going to have A minor just to hear these chords and how they work. that one I just did middle and ring and thumb as my pinch and then index for that G7. I'll demonstrate it one more time. So A minor, D minor, G, C. Okay, let's go ahead and play it. One and two and three. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the sun. Joy! 
that wraps us up for this lesson. I love this song. If you want to hear me playing solo guitar, I've got an album out called Silent Night. Kristen R. Bromley, Silent Night. It's all Christmas songs, 14 selections. This song is on it, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So it's one of the songs on it. I love hearing solo guitar play Christmas music. It's one of the things that I just love this time of year. So if you like that, you can check it out. It's available to stream and download digitally and also on CD format at, at Amazon for streaming and digital downloading. It's available on most of the standard platforms, so it's out there all over, and you can check that out if you'd like to. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. I hope you're having fun playing the guitar. Take care, and we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.